my name is Ming, and I was born and raised in Salt Lake City, Utah. And I went to undergrad in Los Angeles at the University of Southern California and studied neuroscience. Um, I took a year off before medical school and went to China to teach English. And since starting here at Pritzker, uh, for the summer research program, I went to Hyderabad in the south of India for two months, uh, where I studied social networks and HIV in the men who have sex with men population. So as part of the summer research program, we're giving a big handbook of all of these potential projects, and it's like this thick, um, so we have so many options. And the Global Health Initiative um, had quite a few projects in there as well. So I was able to think about if I wanted to go to China, or Nigeria, or India, um, and so on. And, and you know, the Global Health Initiative really made it easy for me to, um, to have this experience, because they had kind of every, the project was already defined, um, I knew the, the description of the project. I wasn't having to create something on my own, um, which I could have done, but um, you know, they just made it so easy, and the application process was easy, and you know, it was it was kind of a a painless way to have an international experience. We generated the social network through SIM cards, um, from, so it's a cell phone social network. We were looking at using. Um, people who have high centrality means that they're in the center of the network, means they're connected to the most people, probably popular leaders of their social groups. So people with high centrality, we call them opinion leaders, because um, other people respect their opinions and um, they have a lot of sway. To recruit these kinds of people to be peer educators, to teach about HIV prevention and safe sex and that type of stuff, and also popularize um, HIV prevention methods. For my particular project, we, were, we wanted to look at the existing peer educators at one of the community-based organizations. We don't know who they are, how they're recruited, where they fall within the network, and so on. Um, so we wanted to interview them and then also look at people within the network who have high centrality and, kind of, and compare the two. The differences between the peer educators and the high centrality network members um, was interesting in that the, the people we recruited from network information tended to be more diverse and might be able to influence a larger population base than the current peer educators. So I knew I was really interested in going abroad uh, internationally to another country this summer and I wasn't sure where I wanted to go. Um, the project in India seemed really interesting to me because uh, I find social networks really interesting um, and working with the men with sex with men population that would be really fascinating. And I had never been to India before, so that was a kind of a, a huge draw for me, was to go somewhere I hadn't been before, have, be fully immersed in a different culture, um, you know, have challenges with the language and um, adapting to local eating customs and, and so on. Basically, our, our study was um, very interview-based, so we relied on recruiting people to come to the office to be interviewed. So they would come in, uh, we would download their cell phone contacts. After having them sign a consent form, we would uh, do an HIV test on them. Um, we would ask them you know, about their socio-demographic information, um, their religion, caste, marital status, sexual history, etc. We got very personal about our questions. Um, we also had um, a pretty extensive survey, you know, to find out more about the, the participant. Uh, and then we also asked about their contacts as well. So each contact in their cell phone, their relationship, and so on. Sometimes I would go visit the, the hotspots with the peer educators and kind of see firsthand what these cruising grounds were like. Um, and that was a really fascinating experience also, kind of seeing the different cues that the people have to, to know that they're interested in other people. I was really fortunate to make other local friends there who, um, who were really proficient in English, so the language wasn't in a barrier. And, uh, you know, I would, we would go see movies or go out to dinner or, um, you know, explore the city. I was fortunate to be able to go to a couple of the festivals and one kind of really neat thing about India is that there's a very strong transgender community, um, they call them the Hijras, um, and also there are Kotis which are kind of 
like Indian versions of drag queens. So they, they'll wear the saris, which are traditional Indian women clothing. Um, and they are such great dancers and they're so friendly. Um, I remember there was one part where we'd march to the temple and there would be drums beating and every few meters we'd stop and dance. And, um, you know, I had, I had one on one arm, another on the other arm, they were pulling me. We were, it was just a fantastic experience. Some of the challenges, I think, would be not having stable internet connection, having to cut out all the time, having power outages frequently. Um, the, the region I was in would, have, um, was, would go on strike every so often because um, it wanted to separate from the rest of the region. And so during that time, we wouldn't be able to go into the office because the office would be closed. Uh, so there would be kind of forced holidays with, um, you know, in the middle of it. Um, but uh, overall, I had a fantastic time. My project was made possible through the summer research program. Um, everyone who participates in the program gets a stipend, and that stipend actually was sufficient to cover my airfare and my living expenses and so on while I was there. Well, I think it was an incredible supplement to my medical education, because so far we've been We've, we've had some clinical experience, but it's been very much kind of um, basic science driven. We're just thrown amidst all of this knowledge that we need to absorb. Um, and so it's, a very, it's been a very kind of academic focus. Whereas this, my experience in India, just being thrown in a very different culture um, and seeing kind of firsthand how public health interventions might work, you know, working with people in the community, um, meeting people who are HIV positive, um, looking at their, the current interventions that exist for um, the men who have sex with men population, it was just kind of mind-blowing. Um, and just not, nothing that I could really fully experience here in Chicago without going there. We have to choose a track for scholarship and discovery, and I'm definitely interested in choosing the global health track. Um, which means that I'll go abroad again in the future and you know I'm really looking forward to that. Um, I haven't decided if I'll go back to India or I might go to China where I can speak the local language and that'll give you know a different experience. Maybe expanding my current project to there or you know doing you know something related or different. At this point I don't know but you know I'm really excited about potential opportunities. I think Pritzker's been awesome about giving us um, so many incredible opportunities and options to choose from uh, to go abroad as part of the Global Health Initiative. My biggest takeaway from this experience is that, you know, I found, I found it really fun to do research and I had done some research before and I, and I wasn't sure if it's something I wanted to continue, but this was a very different kind of research than I did before. I'm um, working out in the community, um, kind of doing you know, the data collection that we were doing, um, and that process was really fun. Um, and then doing the analysis afterward was really, was really interesting as well. And I had a fantastic mentor who really made this experience so much better um, and, you know, helped me throughout the whole thing. So this kind of maybe reaffirmed my interest in doing global health uh, and working with um, underserved populations in the future. I'd really like to thank Pritzker, the Summer Research Program, the Global Health Initiative for making this project possible, especially to Dr. John Schneider, who was my mentor and just such a fantastic um, role model and always there to support me and, and guide me. Um, the, and also I want to thank everyone in India, uh, especially DARPON, which is the community-based organization I worked with, and Share India as well, um, and Sabitha, who was my partner there and did all the interviews, uh, was the workhorse of the project, and uh, Ishin for helping take over while I left, um, and everyone here in Pritzker and in Chicago who gave me support as well.